In this video we're going to have a look at how to bot a color memory game. In this game you have four tiles, each tile can flash. They will each flash once in a specific order and the goal of the game is to click them back in the same order as they flashed. For example right now it's red, you have to click on red, then you have to click on red blue, then it's going to flash red blue blue, then red blue blue, and so on and so on. So the first thing I'm going to do is just create a brand new Python script which I can call script.py. For those of you where you can't see the extension, just go to view and enable the file name extensions. I'm going to open it up with Python 3.7.0. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up a Python shell. I want to know exactly what the position and the color of these four buttons is. To do this, I'm going to import pyrogui like this, and then I'm going to write position. I'll hover over the green one. This is then the coordinates and the RGB values of the green one. I'm going to mark it inside a comment as green, there you go. Now as you can see here, I have commented in all of the positions of each of the tiles. Alright, so in this game you can see that the tile flashes to a different color than it already is every single time it activates, and I want to be able to detect this. For this I'm going to need a module, which is called PyroGUI. I'm also going to import another module, which is the keyboard module, which will let us detect if a specific key is pressed. Alright, so what I just created here is a sort of switch. Here you have a statement that checks if the Q key is being pressed inside a while one loop, so it's permanently going to check if I'm pressing the Q key. And when I press the Q key, this while loop will start infinitely running. So if I demonstrate quickly, if I run this module and then I hit the Q key, it's going to start spamming true. So it's sort of like a switch. Now I'm going to create a function which is going to check which of these is being turned on. I'm going to call it color check. Now here, inside of having this print true inside the while one loop, I'm going to call the color check function. Now when I press Q, this color check function will be constantly called. So inside this color check function, what I want to do is check for each of these coordinates if one of these values matches the value it's supposed to be. For example, for the green one, I can use if pyrogy.pixel, and then I enter the coordinates of the green tile. Also, I have to make sure to remove the Y and also enter a comma to separate the coordinates. Then I'm going to add a bracket and a zero. This means that it's going to check if the red value of this pixel is not equal to 26. So right now we know that a single pixel inside of this green tile has to have the color 26. And that pixel happens to be the pixel in this position. So we can tell if it's being activated if, for example, this tile is suddenly becoming white, which means it's activated. That would mean that it's no longer this value or this value or this value of what it was before. And that's what this function is checking. It's checking if the pixel in this position is no longer the color it was before. Inside of this if statement, I quickly added a print to demonstrate that it actually works. I'm going to copy this over and copy it for all the remaining tiles. Alright, so I finished copying over all of the if statements and adding the correct coordinates, values, and also print statements. So if I quickly give this a run, I'm going to go here, I'm going to press Q to activate the function. And now if I restart, it's going to panic a bit because the colors aren't actually visible. Now if I press start, you can see that the color yellow just flashes. So if I press yellow, you can see it appears. Yellow, red. Yellow, red. Yellow, red, blue. So now you can see that the console is printing out the color of the tile that's being activated. But there's a little issue, you can see that it's being printed out four times and that's not something we necessarily want. But I'm going to close this and I'm going to add a second, very similar statement right under each if statement. Alright, so I just imported a time library and what the time library allows you to do is for example add delays in seconds or milliseconds. For example, time.sleep1 is going to sleep for 1 second, time.sleep0.1 is going to sleep for 100 milliseconds or 0.1 seconds. So what this does, for example, is when this pixel, which is the green pixel, no longer is 26, that means it's active. So then I don't want this to run 4 times, I want it to run once. That means that inside this while loop I'm going to add a tiny sleep so that it waits until it's no longer active. Around 0.05 seconds should do. And before I added this part, the script used to print out the color about 4 times every single time a tile flashed. But now for example, if the green tile would suddenly activate, that would mean that this would also be true since it's the exact same if statement, but the script is going to be stuck inside of this while loop while the tile is active, and it doesn't actually do anything while it's stuck there, it just waits. So that means that this print statement is only going to be allowed to run after the tile has finished blinking. To demonstrate this, I'm going to copy it over to all of the remaining if statements. I also have to make sure to fix the coordinates. 
And lastly, also add the correct colors. Alright, so everything looks fine, let's give it a run. Alright, so I'm going to start over and I'm going to press Q. Now you can see that green blinked once and green was only printed once in the console. That's exactly what we want. So for example, if I now press green, you can see that it activates green, blue. Green, blue. Now that we have a way to tell which tile is being activated, we want to have a way to save the tiles that were activated inside of a list so that we can click them later. To do this, we're going to initiate a new empty list, which is kind of like an array. I'm going to call it color to press. Right now this list will have absolutely nothing, so if you were to check the length of this list it would be zero. I'm going to create two new variables, one which is x and one which is listen. So the purpose of this listen boolean is to be able to tell the script when it should actually be running the color check function or not. For example, we don't want the color check function to run when you're actually clicking back the tiles. You only want it to run when you're trying to figure out what the next one is. For this I'm going to add an if loop here. Adding an if listen is the same as saying if listen equals true. Now let's say that for example the first tile that activated was green. Then I would have to put the green inside of the list. Now if the next time we have green yellow, we don't want to add both green and yellow to the list, we just want to add yellow. And that's what this x right here is for. So what I'm going to do here is inside the color check I'm going to send the x and the listen variable. Where the color check function was declared I'm going to receive them by the exact same name so it's a bit clearer. Now let's say for example you have a list with 5 colors. You only want to add a color if you already detected 5 colors. So you want to add the 6th color. For this for example I'm going to add an x plus equal 1 and an if. Alright so what this does is every single time a color is going to blink x is going to be increased by 1. So let's do a little test case. Let's say we run the script. x is going to be equal to 0, listen is going to be equal to true. Since listen is equal to true, if I were to press Q, this color check function is going to be infinitely run. The x and listen variables are going to be sent into the color check function as x and listen. Let's say that for example the green tile were to flash. If the green tile flashes, then x is going to be equal to x plus 1, which is what the plus equal sign here means. So then it's going to check if x is bigger than the length of color to press. Since color to press right now is empty, it has a length of 0. If it were to have 3 items, it would have a length of 3. And in this case, x is bigger than 0, which means that we want to add the color green to the list. Now, for later use, let's label these colors. For example, let's call green 1, yellow 2, blue 3, and red 4. To add an item to the list, we can use the append function. It looks a little bit like this. Now every single time x is bigger than the total amount of items inside of the list, the number of the color is going to be appended into the list. I copied over that little snippet of code into the other if statements and modified the append number so it matches the color it's supposed to check for. Now we know that if this if statement runs, there's no need to check for any colors anymore, since the final color we were looking for has just been added. That's why we can actually change the listen variable to false. And there I copied it over to all of the remaining statements. Now this script has a tiny little problem, and that's the fact that this x is actually always going to be zero every single time this color check function runs. That's because changing the x inside of a function doesn't actually affect the x outside of the function. To be able to fix this, what we want to do is add a return value. Instead of this return value, we want to return both x and listen. That means that every single time the color check function is going to run is going to return the value of x and listen. And those values we want to store back inside of the original values outside of the function. We want to store them inside the same variable names, like this. Now the script is technically almost complete and we just need to make it actually click back the numbers. As ordered inside of the list once listen is equal to false. So inside here I'll add a little else statement. This else statement will run if listen isn't true. And it's only going to be false once a color has been added. To be able to click, I'm going to import two libraries, Win32API and Win32Con. I'm also going to copy over a function I made in a previous video, which is the click function. The click function takes two inputs, which is x and y. It's going to move the cursor to the x and y position, click the left button down, wait a little bit, and then release it. So this pretty much simulates a click. Now inside of this else statement, I want to loop through every single item inside of the list. For this, you use a for loop. The syntax is for number, this can be absolutely anything. For number in color to press, this will go through every single item that's currently inside of the color to press list. Since the numbers can go from 1 to 4, I'm going to add for if statements. 
Now, I actually made a mistake here. It's not X, it should be number. Like this. Or you could replace all of these for X or Y or Z or literally anything. So if the number, which is an item in color to press is equal to one, we know that it should click on the green tile. And we know that the green tile is located right here, which means that all we have to do is call the click function to click on. We can do this by writing this. I'm going to repeat this with all of the coordinates. I added the click with the correct coordinates to every single tile. Now, once this for loop ends, we know that it has finished clicking, which means that we want to reset the listen value for the script to listen to any new tiles. That's why we're going to reset listen to true. We're also going to set X back to zero. Now, a little issue I forgot to mention is that there should be a tiny delay right here before you set the listen back to true and zero. That's because when you click on a tile, it changes animation and this script runs really, really fast. Which means that if we were to click on a tile and instantly reset listen to true and X to zero, the color check function might accidentally pick up your click as an input, which is not something we want. I'm going to add a time to sleep of 0.2 seconds to make sure that the tile has enough time to reset to the original color. And now if I run the module, put it on the right side, go back to the main menu, press start, I'm going to press Q when the animation finishes, and you can see that the red activates and the script correctly clicks in the sequence it's supposed to click in. Once again, thank you for watching.